Hey everyone, so today's video will be on the godfather of all incels and gunners, Jordan Peterson. For those of you who are fortunate enough to not know who he is, I'll give a little background. Jordan Peterson is a clinical psychologist from the University of Toronto and over the years has become a very famous self-help guru. He has written books such as 12 Rules for Life and Antidote to Chaos and I kid you not, he has also written a sequel to this book called Beyond Order, 12 More Rules for Life. People have went as far as declaring Jordan Peterson as the Socrates or Aristotle of our time. Yes, the bar has come this low. So let's take a look at a couple of clips of the grand philosopher of our time, Jordan Peterson. Increasingly among my students, I see young men who don't know how to be good men. My son wasn't allowed to throw a snowball, for example, in elementary school. It was against the rules for him to even pick up snow off the ground. It is in that manner that decent boys are made to feel guilty about their masculine impulses. So they withdraw, confused. Why do you make your lips red? Because they turn red during sexual arousal, that's why. Why do you put rouge on your cheeks? Same reason. I mean, look. How about high heels? What, what are they What for? about high heels? What about them? They're there to exaggerate sexual attractiveness. That's what high heels do. Now, I'm not saying that people shouldn't use sexual displays in the workplace. I'm not saying that. But I am saying that that is what they're doing, and that is what they're doing. If, if you feel like a serious woman who does not want sexual harassment in the workplace, do you feel like if she wears makeup in the workplace that she is somewhat being critical? Yeah. Okay. I do think that. So as you all can see, this is what we're dealing with here. In this video, we're going to analyze some of the claims that Jordan Peterson has made in these clips and see if there's any basis for these claims in the scientific literature. Let's take a quick look at what self-help is. Self-help is when you help yourself by your own will. This can also be seen as a way to improve yourself psychologically, economically, emotionally, or intellectually. Self-help can be seen in many different forms such as books, TV shows, YouTube videos, apps on your phone. These different forms of self-help provide people with guidance to achieve whatever it is that they're trying to achieve. A lot of times we may not even know that what we're reading or watching is self-help. You may be watching a YouTuber and out of nowhere they may have a video that states how to be more efficient, how to be more productive. I have no problem with self-help. Maybe I should try it myself. You know what? I might watch a Jordan Peterson video after this. I'm joking. My ears are still bleeding from listening to a bunch of his clips in preparation for this video. Okay, back to the point. The problem with self-help is when it can lead to bigotry, which is exactly what we see from Jordan Peterson. So let's start by taking a look at this clip. We underwent a biological revolution in the 1950s, late 1950s, with the emergence of the birth control pill. And that, for the first time in human history, gave women pretty reliable control over their reproductive function. And that really transformed them into entirely different biological beings in many, many ways. Like, here's an example, a subtle example. So, you know, if you track women through their uh, ovulation cycle and you show them a picture of a man, same man, and you do nothing but vary his jaw width, when they're ovulating, the guy with the wider jaw is more attractive, and when they're not ovulating, the farthest away from that, the guy with the thinner jaw is more attractive, and that's associated with testosterone levels. And so women who are fertile like more masculine men, and basically, if you're on the pill, then you're never in that ovulation phase. In this clip, Peterson discusses birth control and how that turned women into completely different biological beings. What the hell is that supposed to mean? I don't think he knows himself. He compares the birth control pill to the hydrogen bomb. Then he decides to bring up the study, which apparently shows that women who are fertile have preference for a man who has a wider jaw. And the wider jaw is supposed to be an indication for testosterone. According to Peterson, this means that women who have been on birth control have a preference for less masculine men, which is potentially the explanation for current societal issues. So what Peterson is talking about as if it is a mere fact is known as the ovulatory shift hypothesis. This hypothesis states that when women are most fertile, they'll have a preference in men displaying traits associated with high testosterone, such as a wide jaw. There are countless studies that have disproved this hypothesis. I'll share one with you here. In this study conducted by Stern, Gerlash, and Penke, they tested 157 females to see if their mate choice preference shifted in their ovulatory cycle when observing competitive or courtship behavior, which is basically a proxy for testosterone as the wide jaw would be. The results showed that female preferences for men did not shift in their ovulatory cycle, 
Here we see that when we go into the details of the science, we come to understand that all Jordan Peterson is spewing is bro science, which at the end of the day can lead to the radicalization of men because he comes off as an authority figure or intellectual that is fulfilling their preconceived misogynistic notions. The implications of such pseudoscience being portrayed as mere fact can result in people believing that women should not be in the workplace, sexual harassment is the fault of women, and that ultimately women are controlled by their hormones. This is exactly what the far right or the alt right do. An example of this could be observed with the Quebec mass shooting which was a result of Islamophobia. Just take a look at the Twitter accounts that the Quebec mass shooter was visiting the month before he did the shooting. You can see that on top of the list was Ben Shapiro who is also a member of the intellectual dark web. This is why studies show that many people who view intellectual dark web YouTube channels of which Jordan Peterson is a part of are likely to watch videos of the alt-right afterwards. If Peterson was not bad enough, imagine what these alt-right channels are spewing. Peterson is not restricted to being misogynistic, he also promotes race science while acting like he's not a racist. Don't even get me started on the paleo or carnivore diets and how all of these things are linked. Honestly, all of this is like its own new age movement. Each of these topics deserve their own videos. Now let's take a look at the clip that I played at the beginning of the video. Why, why do you make your lips red? Because they turn red during sexual arousal, that's why. Why do you put rouge on your cheeks? Same reason. I mean, look. How about high heels? What, what are you, they what for? What about high heels? What about them? They're there to exaggerate sexual attractiveness. That's what high heels do. Now, I'm not saying that people shouldn't use sexual displays in the workplace. I'm not saying that. But I am saying that that is what they're doing. And that is what they're doing. If, if, do you feel like a serious woman who does not want sexual harassment in the workplace, do you feel like if she wears makeup in the workplace that she is somewhat being critical? Yeah. Okay. I do think that. Peterson here implies that women wearing makeup or high heels in the workplace are sexually provocative, which in turn can lead to sexual harassment in the workplace. So from this we can see how Peterson throws the trope that she was asking for it and lays the blame on women for workplace harassment. This is where it's important to understand how evolutionary psychology can be extremely problematic and sometimes plain stupid. The main problem or drawback of evolutionary psychology is that a lot of the claims in it are not testable. Also, every minute aspect is seen as some sort of adaptation by evolutionary psychologists, which is not the way adaptations work. Let's check out this quote by Noam Chomsky. You find that people cooperate. You say, yeah, that contributes to their genes perpetuating. You find that they fight. You say, sure, that's obvious because it means their genes perpetuate and not somebody else's. In fact, just about anything you find, you can make up a story for it. This quote sums it up the best. I want to make it clear, I'm not trying to say that evolutionary psychology does not have any utility to it. It has some important uses, but when every single aspect of life is turned into an adaptation, which is basically having traits that increase survival and reproduction, then that's a problem. For instance, it doesn't make any sense to state things like playing video games is an adaptation, or going to the mall is an adaptation, or going to restaurants is an adaptation, because that's not how adaptations work. Adaptations do not work or have a function on every aspect of your life. I haven't even mentioned that in psychology, there is a replication crisis. STEM lords, don't get too excited. There is a replication crisis in other science disciplines as well. So what do we mean by replication? In short, this means that when one researcher conducts an experiment, usually people try to replicate that experiment to see if these results are accurate. Replication is one of the most fundamental tenets of science and extremely important. However, it's not happening as much in psychology. If we look at the table here, we can see that the overall replication percentage in certain psychology journals is only at 36%. And when we take a closer look, we see that in the Journal of Personality Psychology and Social Science, the replication percentage is the lowest at 23%. Let's not forget that Peterson at the end of the day is a specialist when it comes to personality psychology. If we know that there is such a problem in psychology, should we start presenting any obscure study that has been published in a journal as fact? 
This is why what Peterson says is problematic, because you have an authoritative figure telling a bunch of misogynistic men that their preconceived notions about women are actually true and supported by science. But at the end of the day, all Peterson is providing them with is pop psychology, which does not have any scientific support. So this is the end of the video. I plan to make a part two. So if you like this, please like and subscribe, leave your comments and uh, thank you for listening.